everyone. Coach Sullivan here again with MJS Coaching Football. My background is my 38th year coaching football. I completed my 38th year, sorry. I was a defensive coordinator, but over that time span, I've also been an offensive coordinator, special teams coordinator, a longtime head coach, and all of this at both the collegiate and high school levels. Today, let me just dim the light here a little bit. Here we go. Sorry about that. Today, in this uh, presentation, I want to talk to you about one of our empty zone pressures out of what we call our college AFC front versus empty. Okay, so you have to not subscribers have to push that button, right? Get access to it. And it's what we call Bama. Okay, so the coding, when we use college programs, it's a zone pressure. When we use NFL <coughs> Uh, team cities as well as uh, nicknames then it's a man pressure okay so college is zone nfl is man so this is a zone pressure bama okay and that just said college bama boom done so what i'm going to show it to you is versus a 10 personnel empty set three by two so i'm not getting into motion and four by one and all that stuff i'm just going to show you the basics of how we would execute college bama Okay, two words, college Bama, that's everything. That's the front, that's the coverage, that's the stunt, all wrapped into those two words, okay? It's a zone pressure versus empty, as I said. So the key terms over here, I'm then going to bring to life over here, okay? So I'll, I'll share all that with you in due time. So the first key term is the front. So college is a fixed six-man box. So in other words, it's not a front that we have a name to, okay? So against empty, it's fixed, meaning it's left and right. It's the same no matter what, okay? That's the fixed portion of it. And as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's six-man box. But that's college. Boom, done. Okay, so again, I'm trying to get our kids to play fast by having all five linemen covered with a second-level defender. I mean, that immediately should cause protection problems trying to identify who's coming who's dropping that's a lot okay so then number two the remaining five defenders how we set them our dime field corner free safety go to the lizard rip which is either a three or a four receiver side right and I just make an empty liz in this case the diagram where it could be an empty rip okay Again, empty is defined by the only person in the backfield is the quarterback. If it were a running back, then to us, that's wildcat. Okay, I don't know about anybody else. The quarterback, it's empty. If it's a running back, it's wildcat. Okay, to be clear with everyone. So then number uh, three, the other two defenders, the whip and the boundary, they just go opposite the lizard rip. Now, they're all scrum, scrum together, no huddle, but they scrum together and then they disperse based upon the offense, okay? So then number four, what is Bama? It's our Bambi Blitz. Okay, I mean, Alabama, the program, best in the country the last, what, dozen plus years? But it also just so happens Bama, back and Mike, Bambi, back, right? It fits. So the zone pressure, Bama, we just tell our kids it's Bambi, baby. The kids go, oh, got it, love it. So I would suggest you do the same rather than re, you know, try and create a whole new blitz. We go with the stuff we've already taught and installed. Okay, that's how we do it. So I'll show you how that works out for us out of the college set in a minute. So then the coverage, number five, again, it's our base stuff. We go check steel to the three receiver side, or even if it's the four receiver side, but not to, not this presentation, right? And then we go blue, which is our deep half coverage on the two receiver side. So how we accomplish that? That's a part, the biggest part of the demonst uh, the presentation. Excuse me, coming up. All right, and then the alignments will be in the diagram as I go through. All right, so let's get over here now to the presentation. So I'm not going to get into any specifics about check steel or blue. I'll just go through the alignments and what their assignments are, okay? You're welcome, non-subscribers. So on the three receiver side, the dime apex is two and three, which means he splits them. 
but his alignment is on the heels of his defensive end. Got to give him tangible alignment. So next thing you'll look and you'll see your dimes five yards, you know, deeper than the inside linebackers. Trust me, it happens even in college. Tangible landmarks always are helpful. So by apexing two and three, <clears throat> excuse me, okay, he has first and foremost number two in. That's supposed to be the number symbol. Is my horrible handwriting already at work. He's got two in, two in doesn't come in. The FW is flat wheel. Okay? The field corner, one by seven. Outside, unless the, the number one is south of the number. So we just say one by seven. He's got two one vertical or find work. Right? And free safety, one by 12. Ike inside of three, three two vertical or find work. So remember, check steel. We figure out a way to cover three verticals. With two defenders, not subscribers. Boop, push the button, and then over here on the blue side, the two receiver side, I have them listed at one by seven, but we usually we'll put them in a zone press. Okay, so he's either one by seven. I'll do him in a dash line, or he's an outside press. Doing the same thing, funneling number one inside and playing flat wheel. So if there's nobody in the flat, he's playing deep. That's how we play blue, deep half. One by eight, Ike inside of two. He's the deep half defender. Okay? So now I want to get to Bambi. How do we execute Bambi? All right, subscribers know how to execute Bambi. Nine subscribers, I really hope I'm teasing you into it. Here is Bambi. So notice right off the bat. Both the end and the rover have a pass assignment. The end takes three in or curl. The rover takes two or one in. Okay? Pretty simple. So they're dropping. It's therefore a one, two, three, four-man pressure. But see, this is the beauty of college. The offense doesn't know that. So they hopefully make all these protection checks and then here's what happens. So now I want to focus on the nose and the backer. Okay, Bambi, right? Bama. Lucky Ringo is to the backer. So the backer is always on the left. So therefore, this is always lucky. That's the beauty. It's fixed. So the kids know Bama. It's always lucky. Always. Boom, done. Right? Thing of beauty. So we get the nose is first, backer is second. So let's talk about the nose. Nose is sticking B-gap. So what the backer does, and this is what really screws up the offense, on the snap, he pops back. So they think he's in protection. Meanwhile, he's looking. He sees the nose cross the face. Then he plugs the A-gap. Ah! Right? Meanwhile, the, the stud, I'll go with the stud first. By rule, excuse me, the defensive end opposite the lucky Ringo is in B-gap. So three technique is in B-gap. So he makes sure he phew, takes the B-gap because then he also has to get outside cage. This tackle's worried about the rover. Okay, so that's not going to be hard. The mic on the snap of the football. Plug an A-gap. So this is Bambi, right? It's a double A-gap plug blitz. There it is. So now let me just show you what the rover does and then the end does. Since I'm over here, on the snap of the football, the rover just takes a step at the tackle. So it gets the tackle to set, right? Because he's going to protect on the rover. Takes one step, and then he's working outside. Two to one, right? Because he's got either one of them coming in. If none of them are coming in immediately, he'll just work into the curl area. Okay? Over here, same thing. Take one hard step at the tackle. So now you get the tackle. Wow! Because the tackles typically take the C-gap threats, right? Unless it's a full slide protection, but we're not going to talk about that right now. Okay, so by the rover in the end, stepping at the tackle, hopefully it gets the tackles 
to fan out, right? Makes it easier to get outside cage, makes it a lot easier to stick the B-gap, and then, same thing, get outside cage because the two outside guys are dropping. So take that step, and then, right, he's got number three in. If three doesn't come in, then he works to the curl. Okay, so that portion of the coverage I needed to share with you because it impacts the blitz, right? The two B-gap guys now have outside cage because the two C-gap guys are soup-stepping, getting a tackle to bite, and then dropping. Okay, so that is how we execute Bambi called Bama. Therefore, it's a zone pressure out of our college Fixed six-man box front, left and right, versus three by two empty. So as I said at the beginning, right, my subscribers say thank you. Non-subscribers, I really hope I've teased you into pushing that button. To everybody, please, questions, reach out to me at Coach MJ Sullivan at gmail.com. I'd love to talk football with you. Thank you for watching MJS Coaching Football, and thank you, YouTube, for providing this platform.